Hi and welcome to this tips and tricks video. My name is Dave Hiddeman, the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And uh, today we're going to be talking about custom components, specifically the four different types of custom components that you can create and uh, what those differences are. Um, I'm going to be doing a couple of videos on components and creating your own custom ones. Um, so this is just an, kind of an introduction and where you would want to start uh, anyway. So um, I have four different situations here that I'm going to cover and uh, you can start by going to your applications and components catalog, choosing from your menu button here and choosing the option to define a custom component. Um, now the process that you run through is essentially the same, um, you know, some minor differences, but uh, before you even start picking any type of object, you need to choose a type. So the four types you have are a connection, a detail, a seam and a part. Um, so we're just going to go through those four. Uh, we're going to start with connection since that's the default here. Now a connection is where you have two parts that are colliding. Um, so in this case I have a beam and a beam. This could be a column and a beam. Um, this could actually be two beams butting up against each other. Um, for like a splice type situation, but it's an intersection between two objects. Um, so you want to go ahead and give it a name and this is the, where it starts to get basically the same type of uh, steps going through here. So I'm going to call this uh, beam to beam. Again, it's just very something very simple here. It's just a shear tab. Um, we'll go to the position tab. Um, up direction, I'm going to leave on auto. So it's going to try to follow the members if they tend to be sloping or skewed or something like that. Um, and then you have this position type of middle. Where should this connection be centered around? Um, there's some benefits to changing these up, but honestly for connections, uh, I just leave these at middle. Uh, the advanced tab doesn't have a whole lot of options for a connection. It does, however, give you the setting to allow multiple instances between parts. Um, for most connections like this, you're not going to want to use that because you don't want to have multiple objects or you know multiple connections uh, put on top of each other. So I usually leave that unchecked as well. Uh, unless I have good reason to check it. Um, so you can go ahead and say next and then you want to select the objects that form the custom component. So we're going to highlight everything that's going to be included by the component. So that'll be any cuts, welds, bolts, um, parts that are created, uh, anything like that. So we'll go ahead and say next. Uh, what's the main part? The main part is the supporting member. Um, again, next. What's the secondary parts? We'll pick our beam and hit finish. Now notice this stage does say in picking order. Now for something like this I have one secondary member. It's not going to mean a whole lot to me. But if I was building something like a bracing connection, um, the picking order is critical because the picking order you do here when you're defining is the same picking order that you're going to have to use when you go to insert this component later. So um, in this case I just have the one so I'll say finish. So we can see here that now I get a connection with a cone. Um, that new connection will now go under the ungrouped items here as my beam to beam. You can even tell it's a connection because of the symbol. Um, so that's our first type, uh, a connection. Very easy, very basic, and probably the most common that you're going to create. Um, another type though that will be very common is a detail. Now a detail is where you want to uh, basically create something on a part, and that's, that's what's critical about a detail. It has to be on something else, um, and you may want to repeat it, you may want to change the position of it or something like that. So here I'm going to go to my menu again, we're going to define a custom component, and this time I'm going to call this a detail. Uh, I'm going to give the name as a lifting lug. Uh, position, again, I usually leave that at auto uh, unless I have good reason to. And advanced here, um, detail type and detail. The other option would be intermediate detail. The difference here is that the intermediate detail is always going to maintain the same position where an end detail is going to depend on which end of the member you place it on. So if I, if I place it on the left end of this beam, it's going to look one way. If I place it on the right end of the beam, it's going to try to um, I guess we could say mirror. Uh, that's probably not the right term, but it's going to try to to you know do the opposite direction on the opposite end of the beam. You can actually see that change when you cross the halfway point uh, of a member. So for something like this, I'll call this an intermediate detail. Um, so we'll go ahead and say next. Again, selecting the objects that will form this custom component. So I'm just going to select any plates, bolts, and welds. We'll say next. What's the main part? The main part is this beam. 
uh, next, and then position details. So we can say we want to uh, position based on a reference point, which is, you know, I click where I want it to go, um, or I can just say, you know what, you figure it out based on the main part. For something like this, I'm going to want reference point, so I can set it where I want it. Um, main part might be a little bit more uh, applicable for something like um, a base plate or a cap plate. It, we know it goes at the end. We want it to always go to the end. Um, so, you know, you can practice with those two. I'm going to do reference point. So I'm going to pick a point here, not being too uh, careful about it right now for this simple example, and then we'll say finish. Again, we get a cone. Uh, in the ungrouped items, we now have a lifting lug. You can see how the icon is a little bit different for a detail. And we'll go ahead and click on that, and we want to recreate it. It's just a matter of picking the object and then picking somewhere on the object to create that over and over again. Okay, So connection between two parts, detail needs at least one main part. The next type we're going to talk about is a seam. And I did a video a couple years back about creating a custom stair tread where that's the type that we created were seams. Um, so basically this is going to recap that uh, concept. So we'll come up here again, we're going to define a custom component, we're going to choose a seam. Now what is a seam? A seam is a connection between two parallel objects. So a connection, you need those parts to collide at some point, right? There has to be an intersection point. A seam is where you don't have an intersection point. You have two objects that are running parallel to each other. So stringers on a stair when you want to create a custom tread like this example. Um, Things like if you're creating a, a custom handrail panel where you're connecting a top rail and a bottom rail by creating uh, something new in between them, that's another example. So seams are, you know, uh, maybe not as common as a connection, but there's plenty of use cases for them. So I'm going to call this uh, my custom step. Probably shouldn't call it that because there's already a component called custom step, but we'll just run with it. Um, on the position tab, again, I usually leave this stuff alone. Um, you can adjust some of these position types. We can get into this a little bit later um, in another video, but I usually just leave that alone. Um, on the advanced tab, uh, you're going to want to consider this allow multiple instances uh, of the connection between the same parts. So uh, an example like a step or, or a tread that goes between two stringers, if you do not have that checked, you're only going to be able to put one step on your stair, um, which is going to look a little weird. So I, I recommend for stuff like that, you're going to want to check that option on. Um, this of course is going to be a little bit different depending on the situation. Um, so. Anyway, let's go ahead and say next, um, what are the objects are going to be created? As you see, it's a lot of repetition. So once you get used to how these think, um, it, it's a lot of the same stuff over and over again. So we'll go ahead and say, uh, what's the main part? I'll pick one of the uh, members, and then I'll say next. Uh, pick a secondary part, that's going to be the parallel member, and then next. And then you can select position. So the two positions are used to orient this part. Um, so this could be along the center of something, uh, if you were trying to create something that needed to be um, based about that center line. In this case, it's a tread, so I'm going to pick two parts, or two points, excuse me, along the leading edge, um, my nosing edge. So um, you would find that in the stair tools, that's the guideline, that's the reference that they use for inserting these treads. So that's what I use when I'm creating a seam for that purpose. Um, again, those handles, those picking points, that becomes a little bit of trial and error so that you can see exactly how it's going to react. So we'll go ahead and say finish. Now that I have this here, um, we can see there is a custom step connection created. And a, a seam is a type of connection, remember. It's just between two parallel objects. So that I'm, if I wanted to rerun this, you go ahead and you pick the two members. You pick two points, which would, in this case, indicate my nosing line, and I get a second tread on here. Okay. The last type that we're going to talk about is a custom part. So we'll go back to our defined custom component. Uh, I'm going to choose a custom part. Um, I'm just going to call this thing a frame. Just I was playing around with some angles. And um, something you'll notice about this one, not only do we have parts created, but it's already got components inside of it. These are system components. And yes, it is possible to put components inside of components. So you got some inception type stuff going on here. Um, you can create or use system components or even create custom components that do small things and put them inside more complicated custom components. So lots of possibilities here.
Um, in this case, the position is pretty much locked down. The advanced tab though, something you do want to consider is this use the center of bounding box in positioning. Basically when you pick your points, do you want this thing to just be kind of, um, and, and you will touch on this in another video, but do we want this thing to think about where your handles are or just based on the center of the overall object or in this case the center of this frame. Um, I like to base everything off of my handles because that's kind of my insertion points, right? So I personally usually uncheck this option, but again, little trial and error, um, you can kind of see how it works for you and what will work best in your situations. Um, so we'll say next, what are the objects that are gonna form this custom component? So I'll highlight all of those, including the, the components inside. We'll say next, pick one or two positions. So parts can be a single insertion point, here's where I want it to be, or it can be two insertion points, here's where I want it to be and what direction do I want it to, point, uh, to face or to point. Um, I usually do the two points because that way I can control its orientation. So we'll go ahead and I'll pick two points. Again, these could be a, a number of different ways, but I'm just gonna pick two points kind of parallel to each other and then say finish. Um, now, because I have direct modification on, you can see that there's this um, uh, kind of a bounding box and some directional tools here if I wanted to rotate it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off for now. Um, so here I have a frame. If I want to recreate this frame, I can just pick the same two points. If I wanted to pick these two points at an angle, uh, because I have that option of, of the two points, it's going to rotate my frame for me. So those are the four types of custom components, creating a connection between two objects or more, uh, a detail, which was something that you need a main part and you want to place it on a, on a, on a main part, a seam, which connects your parallel objects, and then a part which is a freestanding, um, could be a frame, could be a lintel, um, could be a lot of different things. So um, in future videos, we're going to cover how to make these more intelligent. Um, so definitely make sure you subscribe and check those out. Uh, if you have any questions, you can comment uh, below or you can always reach out to your local help desk. As always, we appreciate you guys watching.